So here I have two, two different solids. I have some sugar cubes, uh, sucrose for the most part, and some copper sulfate. It's hydrated, but what we're going to do is we're going to show that in the solid form, that when I put up a conductivity detector to them, that they do not conduct electricity. So even if I squinch these together, you'll see the light bulb doesn't light up. And for the copper sulfate, again, that there's no conduction of electricity. And the reason for that is because you need two things to conduct electricity. You need charged particles, and you need the ability of those charged particles to move. Now for metals, see that if I put this up to the table here with the metal piece, that the light bulb lights up. Okay, and that's because metals have electrons that are charged particles that are capable of moving within that solid structure. Whereas the sugar cubes here do not have charged particles, they're composed of molecules, so everything in here is a neutral unit uh, and, and also locked into place. Copper sulfate has ions capable of conducting electricity, but because they are locked into place in the solid form, it doesn't. Now if I take a sugar cube and put it into the solution here, and I take these copper sulfate pentahydrate crystals and put them in a solution here, the sugar cube is going to go from being a solid to still being these molecules, but now in the aqueous form. So when you dissolve a molecular solid, it, it retains the molecular shapes. Okay, so the C2, C12, H22, O11 molecules are still together. The intermolecular forces between them are being broken apart, but this is what my pieces are. Whereas when I put this into water, I'm going to end up forming copper 2 plus ions that are aqueous, surrounded by water molecules, and they're able to move in there. I am also going to form sulfate aqueous ions, and those are going to be capable of moving as well. So when I take this conductivity detector, what we'll see is that for this, nothing will happen. Even if I kind of stir and swing that up, I'm not seeing any light bulb light up, because I don't have charged particles, I just have molecules. Whereas if I take this and put this into this solution, then as I stir this, you're going to see that it's going to start to get brighter and brighter and brighter as more and more particles are able to conduct that electricity and we can see that light bulb start to light up and as we leave this over time, it's going to get even more bright as it continues to get more and more of that dissolved in there. So we'll take a peek back at that in a minute. Now, for the second one here, let's scoot these out of the way. We want to look at the same things, but for acids. So, there we go. Here I've got some glacial acetic acid. So this is acid with no water. And acid with no water is not really an acid because it takes a base in order to create an acid. So as long as there's no water present in here, it doesn't actually look like I'm going to switch these around. As long as there's no water in here, then this is going to be in a molecular form. So there are not going to be charged particles. So when I dip the light bulb into that, nothing's going to happen. And you can see that that doesn't light up. Okay. Whereas, over here I have hydrochloric acid. Now this is in solution. So an acid's job is to give an H plus to something. In this case, the H plus is being given to the water, creating a hydronium ion and then also a chloride ion. And so this is quite capable of conducting electricity because of those two ions present. So this in water, there is a transfer of an H plus ion from the HCl to the water, which gives us H3O plus ions and chloride ions. Sorry, I'm reading sideways there. So here we have charged particles, they're capable of moving, and therefore we see the light bulb light up. Now in this one, this is a weak acid, if I give it something to give an H plus to. So I'm going to take my sugar water from over here, which does not conduct electricity. We'll confirm that one more time. And then I have my acetic acid that's glacial over here, that does not conduct electricity, yet when I mix them, what will happen is some of those water molecules will get ions from them and you'll see a very faint glow, not much for this light bulb, so high resistance here. But you see a little bit of conduction of electricity, this is a weak electrolyte. Some of those acid molecules here are turning into H3O pluses and acetate ions.
but not a lot. And so I see a really small amount of conduction. Now if I go back to my copper sulfate from earlier, by now hopefully quite a bit of this has gotten a chance to dissolve. So we can see that our light bulb is indeed brighter. And you can see a blue color to this. Because more and more of that copper ion is being dissolved in the water. And so, so therefore we have more charged particles capable of moving. And we get a better conduction through that light bulb. So here's the schematic of what we just did. We took copper sulfate. We tried to conduct electricity with it. Those ions are locked into place, okay? So we've got copper two plus ions, we've got sulfate ions, but they're not able to, to change location. And so they're not mobile, and so therefore I get no conduction. Likewise, over here, I don't really have charged particles in the sense that these are all in molecular form, and they're locked into place. Now when I took this and put it into here, so here's my sugar cube in here now, and that starts to dissolve, the particles I'm getting are still these, these kind of molecules, I'm going to kind of zoom in here, so what you would see here is you would see these kind of giant C12, H22, all 11 molecules that don't have charge. Whereas on the other side, when I put a chunk of that in here, and this started to kind of get blue in color, if I could zoom in on one of those things, what I would see is I would see copper 2 plus ions, and I would see sulfate ions, and those are, are charged particles capable of moving throughout the solution. So then what I'm seeing is I'm seeing current running through the solution of water with those, with those copper and sulfate ions, okay? So in order to conduct, you're going to need charged particles. And those charged particles need to be able to move. They need to be mobile. So for salts, if we have a salt that's dissolved in water, or if we have a liquid salt, so you melted a salt, uh, then that would be able to conduct electricity. If you have a metal, which has electrons that are capable of moving within that solid structure, or a liquid metal, that would be able to conduct electricity as well. And then there are a couple things in the realm of molecular compounds, mostly things that are carbon-based, like graphite, or a buckyball, or uh, graphene, any of the carbon nanotubes can conduct electricity.